To make GitHub Action workflows faster and more efficient, you can create and use caches for your dependencies and commonly reused files. Let's see how in today's 3 Minutes Friday. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coder Dave and welcome to a new episode of the 3 Minutes series. In each episode, I will try and explain a concept, showcase a product or service, or yet teach you something and all in just 3 minutes. Short videos, big value, hopefully. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and if you want to learn about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps, just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new video like this. Today we talk about caching GitHub Actions and how to use it. If you are interested in caching for CI/CD system, I recommend you to check out my other video I made about the cache in Azure Pipelines. You can find the link up here and in the video description. But let's focus on GitHub Actions and its cache. Let's start the clock and get into it. To cache dependencies and other commonly reused resources in your job, you'll need to use the GitHub's cache action. And as you would expect, this action will retrieve the content of your cache identified by a specific unique key. Let's take a look at this GitHub action workflow I have over here, which uses the cache action to deal with the NPM packages. As you can see, it's a pretty standard action. And here we have the cache action. Let's take a closer look at it. We can see that the cache action is actually a GitHub official one. And we know that because the repo is actions. And then we can see its variables over here. We have two required one, path and key, and some optional ones like the restore keys. Let's start with the path. These represent the file or the directory that we need to cache or restore. Uh, this path can be an absolute path or a relative path, and its behavior depends if you're using the v2 of the cache, like we're doing now, or if you're using the old v1 action. With the v2, you can specify a single path, like in this case, or you can specify multiple paths as a list. And path can be either directories, again, like in this case, or single files. With the older v1 of the cache instead, only single path is supported, and it must be a directory. Let's now talk about the key. Once again, the key is required and it can be any combination of variables, context values, static strings, and functions, as long as they don't exceed the maximum length of 512 characters. It's always a good idea to have a composite key, so you will ensure the uniqueness of your key. As I mentioned before, we also have an optional property over here, which is the restore keys that the system can use for finding the cache if there's no cache hit for the primary key. So I guess pretty easy so far and very similar to what we've seen last time in the Azure Pipeline cache. In this other action instead, we can see how we can skip a subsequent step if we have a cache hit. For example, in this case, we don't want to install the dependencies if we were able to restore those dependencies from the cache. We need to assign an ID to our cache step. In my case, I have my cache step. Second, we can use the output parameters that are already embedded into the cache action. To do so, we just reference our cache step and then we navigate to its outputs and we have a parameter called cache-hit. We can then use this in a conditional expression for the execution of the next step and evaluate that so to run it only if it's a cache miss. If we take a look at the first run of the GitHub action with the cache, we will see that the cache step is actually not able to find the cache because again, this is the first time we execute this the install dependencies step has to download everything and install all the dependencies. And at the end, we have this post cache step over here, which is automatically injected. And if we take a look at it, we see that it saves the cache. If instead we take a look at the actual workflow with the skip, we will see that the cache step over here was able to find the cache. And in fact, it restored it from the key we provided. And because of that, the install dependency step is skipped. Let's take a look at what this means from the performance standpoint. On the upper left, we have the situation in which we didn't have any cache. So all the burden is actually on the install dependencies. And this brings the overall time to about 41 seconds. The second one we have here on the right instead is the version with the cache. However, there's a cache miss because it was the first time that action workflow was running. So we do have a small overhead for this step, which is actually not able to find a cache. So the install dependency step has to run anyway. It takes more or less the same time. And then we have again some overhead because we need to save the cache back. 
and that takes time as well because we need to upload all the dependencies to the cache system. So for this reason, this run was longer to about 47 seconds. However, as you can see here in the bottom, this is very beneficial when we have a cache hit and we can skip the install dependency step. We do have zero seconds for the install dependencies because we skipped it. And even though this makes the build running a little bit longer and still we have a small overhead on the post cache step, we are able to reduce the total time to about 16 seconds, which is less than a half of the version without the cache. So what do you think about GitHub Action Cache? Do you use it? Let me know in the comment section below. And remember, there's still time for you to get into the giveaway if you haven't done it yet. Just watch last week's video about time tracking with 7Pace and follow the instruction in there. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.